A trace table is used to track the values of variables as they change throughout a program's execution. It helps programmers identify logical errors by showing how data changes step by step. Trace tables are often used manually during dry runs. That's when a programmer goes through the code line by line without running it on a computer. Tracing can be supported by IDE tools for debugging, such as a variable watch or breakpoints. IDE tools is the final topic of paper two. Some general rules for using trace tables include that variable values only need to be shown when they change. Also, when using selection or iteration, it is unlikely that each line will be visited in order. Finally, only printed values will be shown in the output column. The second exam traditionally has one trace table question with a blank table for you to fill in. Usually, the column headers are for the line number, the value of each variable in the extract of code, and any output to be printed. Remember, the code you see will be OCR exam reference language. The biggest difference to real code like Python being that loop ranges are inclusive. So one to three on line two means one, two, and three, not one and two, as it would with Python's exclusive upper range. Starting at the beginning of the code, make your way through and update the values of variables as they change. The for loop is now starting with i beginning at one, you will have gaps in your trace table, as you only need to update it when a change has been made, although you won't be penalized if you repeat a variable's value, as long as it is the correct current value. No change has actually been made on this line, but a calculation has been performed, so it makes sense to add a new line in the trace table. Next is a command in OCR exam reference language and other types of pseudocode that increases the value of the count, in this case i, by one, ready for the next iteration through the loop. The loop has returned to the starting condition, which is still valid as i is currently two. No changes have been made, so there's no need to update the trace table. Be careful with recording your line numbers and don't absentmindedly keep counting by one each time. We're back on line three and now total is updated to four with two multiplied by two. Use what you've got from your trace table to track current values if any calculations are required. Next i increments the count by one to make three. Back at the start of the loop, i is now three, so we know it's the last iteration. Total's new value is now 12, as it was four, and multiplying that by the value of i, which is three, makes 12. The next i command increases i to four, which is outside of the range one to three on line two, so the loop is now finished. With the loop complete, we've reached the final line, which is a print line, and that goes in the output column. It is important to practice completing trace tables and remember that the code you see in exams will be OCR exam reference language, like the extract here, and not Python or Java. So I recommend you have a go with each trace table question from previous exams 2022 onwards, of which there's usually one per paper too.